Hey, my name is David. I work as an engineer on the Uber Movement team. Uh, for folks who aren't uh, familiar with Uber Movement, we are essentially kind of a public data sharing initiative from Uber. Uh, we're fortunate enough at any moment to have thousands of cars driving around a city. We can actually use the GPS traces from driver phones or other similar data uh, to kind of package that up and give that back to cities and researchers and urban planners in a way that uh, we can use that information to improve cities. Uh, so one of the things that we actually launched yesterday is a new data set called Movement Speeds. Movement Speeds is a free data set of historical speeds aggregated from anonymized Uber trips. Uh, if anyone's familiar with Uber Movement's first data set, it was something called travel times. That was essentially how long it took for an Uber to go from one part of a city to another. Uh, so you might see that Ubers take on average, you know, some amount of time to go from Brooklyn to Times Square. Uh, one consistent piece of feedback that we heard from customers was that they wanted more granular data. So movement speeds is kind of our uh, answer to that piece of feedback. Uh, and what you can see here is just speeds uh, historically on at the road level in between intersections. And we'll do a, a deeper demo into what all the functionality that's offered here. But what are the applications of this data set? Uh, so there's a, a, few, a few different applications. Measuring impact is really the biggest one. So whether this is measuring the impact of some infrastructure change, like you're adding a lane to a road, or maybe you want to see the impact of a sports game that lets out at a certain time of day, you can actually start to look at how that affected congestion uh, in the past uh, anytime that event happens. Uh, so examples of this were in, in New York City, actually, an organization called Steer, uh, as well as one called Eco Sight Lines in Seattle. Uh, they did use, use speeds data in order to be able to, to, to measure the effect of congestion pricing. Uh, so that's one really great example of how you can uh, use speed, speeds data to be able to measure policy changes like that. Uh, another really cool example was actually using the speeds data as kind of a validation data set. Uh, Jane McFarlane from uh, UC Berkeley is actually doing really interesting travel simulation on supercomputers. Uh, and she is actually using some of movement's data to be able to validate that these simulations are uh, working as expected and they're actually resembling real world data. Um, so this is another really interesting application. Then a third area is just identifying problem spots inside of a city. Uh, so imagine you know, you have speeds data and then one of the things that we'll actually end up doing in a tutorial later is overlaying that with collision data and we can start to see whether or not there's a correlation between fast speeds and whether or not there are more accidents at an intersection. Uh, and that's one idea that we're exploring for this challenge that the U.S. Department of Transportation is putting on. Uh, so you'll get the chance to play around with that information later. Uh, now we're going to do a quick demo of the speeds product. It shouldn't take too long. We'll see if the demo gods are shining down today. Actually, we already have it open here. Awesome. So we're actually super excited to be launching this in New York City. We didn't have New York City data before. Um, so this is really the first sort of piece of open data that we're, we're giving out related to New York City. Uh, but you can see here, this the initial view isn't too different from something like the traffic layer on Apple Maps or Google Maps. Um, but the important thing here is that we can actually start to dig into uh, individual roads and see things like what the average speed is uh, and how that compares to the free flow speed, which you can kind of think of as a proxy for the speed limit. Um, but it's, it's actually uh, can sometimes be a better indicator of what the actual free flow um, speed is of vehicles on that road. So let's say, for instance, we want to see how uh, rush hour in the evening looks in New York City. We can just jump over to our date filters select evening, apply those filters. Weekdays, evening, oh sorry, I wanna do PM peak to see rush hour. Uh, and you can see compared to the screen before, it's actually gonna look a lot more red. So as I'm sure many of you are aware, congestion is it's definitely a problem in, in New York City as well as many other cities across the US. Uh, but in this case, if we actually wanna start diving into some of the more problem areas, uh, we have a legend filter over here where you can jump down and just filter down to the areas that are problematic inside of the city. And then let's say, for example, we want to look more deeply into Brooklyn Bridge. Um, it looks like around rush hour, this is 12 miles per hour on average. Uh, we can start to jump into more information about this, this road segment, uh, both how it performed over time for the last uh, number of days inside of my time range, as well as how this compares by day of the week. Um, and to other time periods throughout the day, like evening or, you know, in the middle of the night. 
So this is the main functionality, but in, in addition to providing that, we really wanted to be able to provide access to the raw data itself. Uh, we can only imagine so many different use cases inside of this tool. Um, so providing the raw data was really important to us. And it's pretty much all available on this website. So uh, you can see here an example of what this looks like. It's really just a CSV uh, where we're giving average speed, standard deviation speed for each road segment uh, for each hour inside of a given month. Uh, and this ends up producing a pretty massive amount of data because there are, you know, you can imagine in San Francisco, I know there's around a million road segments. They're not all traversed by Ubers in a given hour, but uh, these CSVs for monthly data can be on the order of tens of millions of rows. So that's a lot of data to sink your teeth into, but uh, we're excited to see what people end up doing with it. Uh, because that is a lot of data too, we are actually building some tooling to be able to, to help work with it uh, and understand this information. So we created this uh, toolkit called Movement Data Toolkit. Uh, it's essentially a command line tool that allows you to uh, automatically download this data, join it, and produce a GeoJSON file that you can then drop into a tool like Kepler and start to visualize it. Um, and then you can start overlaying different data sets that you might be interested in. Uh, and that's actually, that product is what you all will be working with in the tutorials today. Uh, we're not going to have you downloading like six gigabyte files. You'll just be working with these smaller GeoJSON files that have aggregated data inside of them. But that is movement speeds in a nutshell. Um, we're excited to see how folks end up using it. 